Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Some really exciting things going on in the world of AI, and I'm sure you've seen all the buzz around MTPs and just how they're going to change everything. Or will they? It's such an abstract concept that it's sometimes hard to understand without seeing an easy example of one actually working. In this video, we're going to do exactly that. We're going to go over a very simple use case of an MCP working in the wild within Inaden. We're going to be using a Brave Search MCP from a custom built form like this, and you'll be able to enter in any AI tool that you like and let Brave search it on the back end via MCP call. We will also reduce down those returns and format them a little bit better to be able to send them into a Notion database like this. And we'll be able to build a full database of cool AI tools that we're interested in learning about and be able to search them like this. And lastly, this workflow will even send you an email with the exact same setup instructions. In this video, we're going to set up and run this brand new MCP server specifically for NADN. Nerding-io in GitHub was nice enough to grace us with an actual NADN MCP server that has multiple use cases. And I'll link his video here. It has detailed instructions on how to install and run, which I'll be going over in this video. In my last video, which I'll link here, I connected complex code to NADN and Docker. And even though I specified it wasn't a true MCP, I still caught some heat in the comments. Stop it, get some help. So hopefully everyone is now pleased with the new unveiling of this great project. So thank you to the maker of this new MCP server and let's jump right into it. I found myself almost getting overwhelmed with the amount of new AI tools constantly being dropped. Things like MCP and other new tools that are always coming out and it's kind of hard to keep up and I know many of y'all are facing a lot of the same issues. The project today is aimed at relieving some of that drinking from a fire hose like pressure. My goal here is to be starting a new weekly series going over AI tools that I'm using on an everyday basis and demoing new relevant tools for everyone to see set up and install that they're interested in. This will hopefully cut through a lot of the unneeded information out there and get straight to the point of the tools that you can use that will actually 10X your output, which is the entire point of using all these AI tools in the first place. So if you're interested, go ahead and subscribe and tune in to the new weekly updates. To solve this, we're going to be building a form submission workflow that lets you instantly search new AI tools and get a step-by-step -step breakdown of how to install and use them. After the Brave search and the outline instructions, It'll be automatically updated to this community tools database, which will house all the tools that you guys are actually searching for and give a rough starting point on how to actually install and work these tools with links to go with it. And with this database, you'll be able to quickly search past queries to filter by what you want to see. So imagine having your very own search engine tailored to new AI tools and how to set them up. It'll alleviate the headache of having to Google search or ask Claude a million questions because you'll have this setup instructions just at your fingertips. This database will also serve as a template for my future weekly updates on new tools within AI. So I'll go to this exact database to see what people are interested in or what they want to see a demo of. And this database, along with the form to be able to submit to this database, will be accessible in my community. Members can add tools which they want to see me do a tutorial on or demo how to actually use them. The community, along with all the templates from this video, will be linked below. So let's get into it. So first we're going to hop over to our NADN and make sure our MCP community node is actually set up. And first I do want to say that I am running my NADN in Alessio and this MCP server node will only be accessible through locally hosted NADN instances. I've set it up in Alessio, Docker, and locally hosted on my own machine and it all works. And I have a full video on how to install NADN within Docker and I'll link that here. Now if you are hosting your NADN locally, you can follow these steps. You can go to settings and then you'll need to go to community nodes. And then once in community nodes, you can see I already have one here. You'll click install. And then just like you see it on my screen, you'll need to have NADN dash nodes dash MCP. And then you'll also need to check this box of understanding the risks of installing unverified code from this community node. So once you click that, you can install it. I'm not going to, I already have it, but then you can hop back over. And then to test to see if you have it, you can go to the search and you'll see the MCP client right here. We're not going to be going over the MCP client tool in this video, but let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. But for this tutorial, I wanted to keep it pretty straightforward and get the setup and the basics down. So I'm going to hop over to a blank workflow and we're going to work through this together. So starting off, I'm just going to start with the MCP client and do list available tools. 
and this will be able to show you all the available tools within whatever MCP that you're gonna be trying to use with this node. So for us today, it's going to be the Brave web search. So we will need to be able to set up our credentials with the Brave API. So to be able to set that up, you'll create a new credential if you don't have one. And this is where we're going to be referring back to the documentation in GitHub and also getting our Brave API key. So hopping back over to GitHub, I'll link this below, but this gives really good detailed instructions on how to be, on how to actually install and set this up. So we'll scroll down until we go to the example using Brave Search MCP server. So here's going to be the credentials for the command, the argument, and the environment variables. So we'll just copy over what it says here to be able to set up your credentials. I'll copy this, and we know the command is mpx. Hop back over, do mpx, and enter the arguments. And then hopping back over to GitHub, and you'll need the brave API key equals you need to show that as an expression, make sure that you have the equal sign in there. And then you'll want to hop over to Brave API where you're going to need an account set up if you don't already have one. And then going over to their API dashboard. So this is what their dashboard looks like. You'll click into this API key tab and add an API key. And you'll copy that and head back over to Enaden and paste that in and save. And now we'll be able to test this step. And just like that, we have successfully connected this MCP server, and we know it's working correctly because we're getting the tools within Brave Web Search. And this is the tool that we'll be using, but there's also Brave Local Search as well within this. That'll search for local businesses and placing in places using Brave's Local Search API, which is pretty cool. So now that we have the connection set up and we see the tools that we're able to use, we'll need to make sure that we have this Brave underscore web underscore search either copy it down or remember it well enough to type it out into our next node. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this over and you can delete this. I'm going to go back to MCP and do execute tool. Now this is where you'll enter in the tool that you're going to use. So if you wanna use a local search, you'll have to put in the local search there or any other tool, you can just put it in here. You can also build this to where you can pass on the list, where you can pass on the list of tools first, and it'll make it a little bit easier just so you don't have to remember it. And then for this, you can do query, and then this will be what you're going to search. So you can do query latest tech trends, or whatever you want to search. trends or whatever you want in a search. And then you'll switch this to an expression, and then we can test this step as well. And just like that, we have successfully set up our Brave connection, and it'll show, it'll actually show real search results within here. Now to give it real searches, we're going to be making a form to be able to capture whatever we wanna search. We could also pass along a chat in here, but I like the form so I can be able to give it to my community or even myself and write whatever I want to in there. Now you can do a form in pretty much anything. You can even make your own. For this quick example, I'm going to be using Tally. I'll leave a link in the description below, but it's free and it's really easy to set up. So I just thought I'd make this entire tutorial pretty seamless. So what we're going to be building is a very simple form that is just what's the tool and the email. And you could even leave out the email if you wanted. I didn't make the email a requirement, but the tool is a requirement. So to do that, we're just gonna do new form, and you can use a template, which make it 20 times faster. And they have a ton of forms here, but I'm just going to click the first one. And I'm just going to use this template. And I'm going to make it pretty generic. Brave search request tool. Delete this. Delete tool. And have this one required. Delete these. Delete this. Now this may be a little ugly, but you get the point. And I'm just going to add an email, insert, delete, email, and we can customize it. So we can background dark, or we can just do custom theme dark. Now this won't be a full tally tutorial. If you want that, let me know, but I think this looks pretty good for what we're gonna to try to do. Yes, I know the text is different sizes, but we're just gonna roll with it. We're gonna make this not required. 
and we're going to publish this. And then we have the link here. We can copy this and open up in a new workspace. And here's our form. We'll head back over to Tally and go to integrations. And we see we have a bunch of integrations that we can have here, but for us, we're going to go to webhooks and this is where we're going to need our endpoint URL. And you'll also notice that we receive HTTP posts. So we'll, it'll be a post webhook. So then we'll need to jump back into in in here, delete this webhook. And this will be our endpoint URL. Remember, we need to change this to post path. I'm going to change this to tally. And if you click this, it'll auto copy for you. So you'll need to also notice that whenever it's test or production, it will, it will have a either dash test or not. So just know that if you do want to take this out of testing and put it into production, you'll need to make sure that your endpoint URLs are structured correctly. You could also just add both of them. But for us, let's do the test, hop back over and do connect. And we see it's green and let's give it a quick test. We'll hop over to Brave, listen for a test event. So here, do test, submit. And you'll see that it worked. We have this, we can pin this here and we can connect this to our MCP client. Rename this Brave Search. And so once we're in here, instead of having this hard coded in whatever we're searching, we can do value test. And you'll know that this, whatever you put in here for your testing of the webhook, you can put it in there. And now really from here, you could do whatever you wanted from these tools. And I do want to mention that the real power of these tools is whenever you're going to hook them up to an AI agent, and perform a multitude of tasks or different things with an MCP server. So super exciting things and videos to come. So let's go ahead and just test this, see if it worked, delete this, uh, unpin this, and test workflow. And it'll be listening for us, refresh this, and do quad MCP and submit. And we'll hop back over here and we see this is running. And cool, it worked. So title, Claude, MCP, model context protocol, awesome. So for this entire project, like I said, we're going to be uploading it to a database and trying to give us instructions. And also at the end of this workflow, it's going to be sending an email and uploading to a Notion database. So we wanna have this just a little bit better structured and more consumable rather than, rather than how it is right now. So we're gonna put in a message model here, so open AI, and I'm just going to do message assistant. So I'm going to change this resource to text and I already have my open AI credentials in here. If you don't have it, I'll link that video here and I'm just going to choose a model 3.5 turbo for this totally fine. And we just need to add a prompt. So I'm just going to paste over the prompt that I already had. Now this is going to seem daunting, but trust me, it's not. It's just a pretty generic prompt from chat GPT basically saying what I wanted to do, saying that I want a simple outline format, of instructions on, on how to do certain things or set up certain AI tools and how I wanted it formatted and what the data that's it's going to be getting as well. So we can go ahead and do this. And I included the text from here to make sure that it was getting the input correctly. So then we can just test this step and there you go. It added emojis, you can take those out if you want, but it formatted our outline for us and made it more consumable and concise, which is exactly what we wanted. And it also included links so next I wanna be able to save these searches in some sort of database. So I'm gonna be saving these in Notion. You could use Airtable, you could use whatever database that you want. So let's get into setting up Notion. So if you haven't set up a Notion connection before, it's pretty straightforward and actually pretty easy. Notion is super good about being more open to developers and connecting to a lot of these tools. So I'm actually just gonna start with a blank page here, just so we can set up our own. So we can just title this Brave Search Results. And then we can just do a database. So I did forward slash and it, and it will populate a bunch of options here. I'm gonna do a table view and I'm gonna title this table Search DB. And now there's one or two ways that you can go about connecting. You can either go through your account settings or if you are working in a certain database or page and wanna connect it through there, you can go through here and you can go to connections and then go to manage connections. 
Now, once in Manage Connections, you'll want to go to Develop or Manage Integrations and click New Integration. And then you'll do a Associated Workspace, Internal or Public. It's going to do Internal and give it an integration name. So Brave Search Site. And then this will be your secret here. And you can also give it more capabilities to read comments, insert comments. I'm just going to leave those as is for now. So once you're here, you'll want to hop back over to your N8N, Notion, add our Notion node, so go here, Notion, and you'll get met with a lot of options here. Like I said, Notion's really great on being able to connect and really do anything that you want to. So for this, we're going to create a database page, and this is where you'll that key that you just made within your new instance. I'm going to paste mine there and save. Connection was tested successfully. And you should see the, oh, I forgot. We need to hop back over to N8N for one split sec. So you'll exit out of that and go to connections and search this connection that you just made. Brave search, confirm, and you'll see that this connection shows up here. So now headed back to N8N, you'll click this and your database should be there. Now for title, we're going to go all the way back to webhook and give the value as the title. And then we're going to add a block, paragraph, keep that the same, and go back to our open AI and put our content in here. And then we can go ahead and test this step. Okay, and it gave us the ID for us to use later, the name, the URL, and property name. So let's go ahead and go back to Notion, see if it worked. And it did, perfect. We can go to open and voila, we have our instructions. You can make this database a little bit prettier, but for now we're just gonna keep on cooking. So headed back to N8N, our last step here is going to be adding a Gmail to capture our email address. You can hard code this in if you're not connecting if you're not collecting from other people and just want it sent to your email address, but let's go to send a message. You'll need to add your credentials, send to, go all the way back to the webhook, and we'll need to test with a email address. So let's go back, let's delete all the stuff that's in there. Let's test the work, we gotta delete that. Let's test the workflow, go back to our form, Let's do Claude, just put in an email address, or you could put dummy stuff in there just so we get the correct credentials. Okay, now we can add our Gmail, send a message, go all the way back to webhook, and we will have our value to two. Open AI. You're going to have a subject here, your latest brave search, and then we can put a message there. And boom, guys, we can test this step, and you should be getting an email. Perfect, I got an email. So awesome, guys. That's it for today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Hope you join the community and use the database and the search function, or at least subscribe and see some of the weekly updates on some of the new tools. You can even leave some suggestions in the comments and I'll most likely do some videos on them. And hopefully in the not too distant future, N8N will have natively MCP servers within all their node packages. And really from there, the sky is the limit. This is really gonna be an awesome time going forward. And I'm so excited on the things that we're gonna be able to build with all these and the workflows that we're gonna be able to automate. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, see ya.